G'day folks, here we are again on the channel making new crap out of old crap. Today, I'm gonna to make a bird bath. Nice quick one today, let's get into it. I'm gonna use an old plow disc for the main base. It's a good shape because it'll hold water, but not too much by the time I weld an edge around it. For the edge, I'm using some 30mm by 3mm flat bar, and I'm using the roller to make it into a neat circle. These hand rollers are fairly cheap and come in handy every so often. I clamp it down to the bench, then adjust the roller wheels to get it going. Then it's a case of tightening the rolls a little bit each pass, probably about an eighth of a turn. There's a little bit of adjusting required at the ends where I couldn't roll right through. I could have cut the ends off over the curve, but this works too. Now I'm removing the rusty edge from the plow disc so I can get a decent weld. Pinning it all down in the right spot took a bit of mucking around, but once I get a few tacks in, I can go around and fill the gaps. First I'm doing a test with a torch to find any obvious gaps, then when it's pretty close, it's time to go outside and do a water test. I'm marking any leaks with the chalk, then welding over it until it's all watertight. This is the other old sleeper we brought up when I did the letterbox build a little while back. This one's a bit rough, but um, I might be able to use it. Just got to make sure we get all the rocks and crap out before I put a saw blade through it. So we'll tip her up and have a look. Just spiders and centipedes, no drama. Gonna give it a bit of a bug spray. Cause the bugs in Australia will kill you, mate. <coughs> Check this out. Found these old bits of scrap from a table I built a while ago. I reckon I can use these directly in front of this. That's a nice bit of rusty steel texture. That means I can get rid of these things. They've been hanging around, annoying the crap out of me. So that's good. Just need to do a little bit of scoopy doopy out of here to sit this on top. Uh, I think I'll use a bit of angle line along the back to give it a bit of structure. So the steel from the base all the way up to the top. It means I don't have to use this thing, which I was gonna try and use as part of the frame, but I don't think I need this anymore, so... I'm going to try and use this square here as um, a double purpose. I'm going to use it to make sure I'm vertical 
I'm also going to actually clamp it to this. So I know it's perfect and it's held in the right spot when I weld it. I'm just going to try and do this with only two hands. I've got a quick grab lined up here and then I'll do the same on the other side. It's a bit awkward. Come on, don't do that. I'm using an old rail pad for the base. You can find these on disused railways. I'll leave the spike holes exposed in case we need to pin the bird bath down onto the ground. I had to muck around with the clamps because the rail pad is on an angle. I also had to cut little chunks out of the angle line to get a decent contact patch for the world. As with most things, it's a case of tack and check before completing the world. To weld the thin sheet, which is one and a half mils, to the heavy rail pad, I had to ensure my MIG voltage and speed settings were spot on. You need to achieve decent penetration without burning holes through the thinner material. Now the bird bath top is just going to sit on the top so it can be taken off for cleaning or leveling if needed. So I'm going to use a little bit of this and a little bit of this bad boy to make that curve on top as snug as I can get it. Well that's really it for this project. I think it's heavy enough that birds don't disturb the top, but if it moves I can always tack it in place or weld a rod underneath so it sits into the old sleeper more securely. This will rust up over time and create a nice orange patina and contrast against the weathered timber. Thanks for watching, have a cracker.